Welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. Today we're going to talk about sacrifice. When I was playing baseball, uh, there were times that I was asked to give myself up or turn around and show the other team that I was bunting to try to get a, a runner. He was either on first base or might have been a runner on second base or there might have been a runner on first and second or there could have been a runner on third base where we were doing what they call a suicide squeeze, but it was still a sacrifice. And Rod Carew was probably one of the best bunners that I ever saw. And when I was playing in the major leagues, but there would be some times that he would have two strikes on him, and yet naturally the third baseman would play back, the first baseman would play back. They wouldn't think he would bunt with two strikes, but Rod Carew did, and he was very successful at it. But today in the big leagues, it seems to be a lost art because when you all watch some of these games, some of these left-handed hitters get up there and you see a shift come on and that third baseman is over there playing shortstop and the shortstop's way behind the second base bag and second baseman's out in right field. <clears throat> what would it hurt for that left-handed hitter to just to drop a bunt down the third base line? He would be getting himself on base very easily and helping his batting average, helping his team. But yet, when I played, we were always told to try to make the other team make adjustments. But we had to make adjustments too. If they were getting us out with certain pitches, we had to try to learn how to hit that pitch and adjust to it. But if the other team is gonna give you a hit and you don't take it, there's something wrong. And that's why I'm saying sacrifice, bunt, and baseball is becoming a lost art. Because if that guy was gonna give me a, a base hit just to drop one down, I'm gonna take it. It wouldn't be no problem with it. But what I want to talk about today is, is sacrifice a lost art in the church? And to some degree, I think it is. Because sometimes we're not willing to give our time or our money or do the things that we need to do to make a sacrifice where it's not about us, but it's about somebody else or even more importantly, about the church or about Jesus Christ. Let me give you a couple of examples. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, starting in verse 18 and going through 24, it says, So Gad came to David that day and said to him, Go up, erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. David went up according to the word of Gad, just as the Lord had commanded. Arana looked down and saw the king and his servants crossing over towards him. And Ara went out and bowed his face to the ground before the king. Then Arana said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor from you in order to build an altar to the Lord, that the plague may be held back from the people. Arana said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what is good in his sight. Look, the oxen are here for the burnt offering, and the threshing sledges and the yokes of the oxen for the wood. Everything, O king, Arana gives to you. And Arana said to the king, May the Lord your God accept you. However, David the king said to Arana, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. For I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. David was going to worship God. And he says it was going to have to cost him something. Although it cost him a little bit of money, but it cost him his time, it cost him his effort to go there. But most importantly, he sacrificed by obeying God's word. And that's what we want to do today. Also, in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 15 through 17, said, David had a craving and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. 
So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem, which was at the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but he poured it out to the Lord. Wow. Can you imagine that? Another army, a Philistine garrison down by this well in Bethlehem. And all David did was just make a, a, a general statement. He wasn't really talking to anybody. He was basically talking to himself. Oh, I'd love to have a drink of water from the well there in Bethlehem. But you had three men <clears throat> that were willing to sacrifice their life for their king over a simple drink of water. Wow, to me that... That's, that's one of the most ultimate sacrifices that a person can make. But we have the King of Kings. We have the Lord of Lords. We have the Great Shepherd, the Great Physician. What type of sacrifices are we making for Him today to try to broaden the church, to try to learn more about the Bible, to please Him in every way that we possibly can? And to be able to make a difference in someone's life, you don't have to be brilliant, rich, beautiful, or perfect. You just have to care. We need to let the love of Christ melt our heart like butter and try to be as much like Him as we possibly can and be willing to lay down a bunt in the ninth inning as a sacrifice for the team, not for us. We're giving ourselves up, but do it for Jesus. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.